quite simply uh, a love of the outdoors. I just love being outside. Uh, I'd have to say um, mountain gorillas fascinated me the most. I was very lucky to spend uh, about five weeks uh, filming and, and watching families of mountain gorillas. And it's just remarkable how similar they are to us. Uh, and it's fascinating. Um, I wouldn't say any animals particularly scared me. Um, I have to say they're walking on foot in lion country when you come from a, a, a country like England where there's very little uh, dangerous wildlife. It makes, you, it makes you feel a little bit nervous. It's a little bit disconcerting. That would have to be gorillas. As I say, watching the families, you get to see how close they are to us. The, the, the young ones playing much as my children play. It, it was incredible. Uh, I'd say anything underwater is pretty challenging, just the kit um, and, and the difficulties of filming underwater. Uh, so probably the most challenging was filming underwater in Antarctica under the ice. Um, just getting to Antarctica is, is tough enough, let alone having to film underwater and under ice. Well, they've just shown me the incredible and remarkable diversity of life that, that's found on this planet. And it's just, I'm just in awe every time I, you know, I go out and, and go out into nature and, and you know, listen to wildlife or watch wildlife. Well, I'm not sure it'll happen in my lifetime, but I reckon smelly telly, where you can actually smell what you're watching, would be a big advance in technology. I think the biggest uh, difference in the way um, uh, natural history filming is done today is, is in the editing. It's the stories we tell and the characterizations we make. The editing process has, has, has come on tremendously in our storytelling techniques. No, no, not really. If I was worried, then I probably wasn't doing my job well. Everything we do is um, risk assessed and we make sure that we do it safely and properly. So I think um, although we do what looks to be dangerous, we are very careful to make sure we're, we're, we're safe all the time. And we work with experts, with wildlife uh, scientists and, and the best wildlife cameramen. And so, you know, it, it, we, we know what we're doing basically. So, we, we, you know, we're, we're pretty certain we're safe. Uh, yes, I, I have been to India and I found it one of the most vibrant and colourful countries I've ever been to um, and I would love to come back. Well, I've been very lucky. I've been to all seven continents and, and um, uh, quite a few countries now. But I have to say, if there was any country um, I would look forward to going back to, it is India. It's been far too long since I've been there. And it's a fascinating uh, country and has some amazing wildlife. Yes, since I've been filming, I'd say uh, things have certainly changed. I'd say uh, the biggest change is the predictability of the weather. Um, dry seasons are no longer dry, wet seasons are no longer wet. And this has a, an effect on wildlife and how it behaves. So yes, it's a, it does have an effect on, on the work I do. Um, and you know, uh, wildlife you know is threatened. We, you know, you see you see greater levels of pollution wherever you go. Um, so yeah, uh, it, uh, things are changing. But I think we're we're realizing that now, and I think we're hopefully we're beginning to do things about that. Let's all do our bit. You know, we it, no matter how small, if we all do something, it'll all it'll all it'll all contribute to helping you know save the, uh, the planet. And after all, we uh, we only have there is only one Earth, so I think we should look after it. Sony BBC Earth, feel alive. Uh, that's it. Thanks very much.